computer. Welcome everyone. It's Sandra Alexa here and I'm very excited today. We have a fabulous guest and today is February. I believe it's the second and we have this wonderful full moon uh, showing up. Today we have Jessica and she is a phenomenal healer. She is a tuning fork practitioner. Okay. And I've had some treatments with her and she's fantastic. Today, we're going to talk about energy and the Schumann resonance and stuff. So, Jessica, do your thing. All right. We'll be tag, tag, tag teaming this. Yes, we will. Uh, so, the Schumann resonance um, was first coined and discovered by uh, Winfred Otto Schumann. One of the ways that he uh, discovered this is through the lightning strikes of course, through Earth. And that is just now as we're learning, one way of looking at the, the Schumann resonance. Um, and since then, uh, and we'll demonstrate this in the presentation as well, uh, exploring a few different options of how it's exemplified, but the Hertz level that has been uh, dated is 7.83 Hertz. So let's talk about that um, as the Earth's heartbeat, mm -hmm. looking at it from a pulse perspective. And of course, it's uh, like almost like a binaural beat, but of course, just at uh, the starting frequency of 7.83. And what we're finding now is higher levels of that Hertz, which is a frequency based pitch that is pulsing at greater levels, like uh, Hertz frequencies. And that of course can also be geared back to us if you're thinking like the pulsing in terms of our own pulse of the heartbeat. And even though we don't necessarily get to see the Schumann resonance with our naked eye, because it is such a low pitch sound, our body can still sense it. And for some individuals, when they are outside in nature, barefoot on the ground, they're starting to connect with this natural sensation that is all a part of being really aligned with Mother Earth. Right. And this, for me here, the Schumann resonance, okay, may not only affect the Earth, they're finding that it can also align or implement changes in the human consciousness. Yes. And we have a slide for that. Stay tuned. Yes. <laughs> um, and one of the really cool things about it is uh, because so much of Earth and us as human beings are water based, um, we can see sometimes the ripple effect of how that hurts interacts with water. And as we explore, and even as um, that resonance is increasing and fluctuating, we can have such an interesting felt sense connection with that change in the hertz. For some individuals, when they have that opportunity to be um, connected with earth through the feet, by touching a tree, being out in nature, however they wish to have that kind of um, outdoor experience, this is one of the ways that the resonance is having that beautiful connection with the physical body. One of the ways that we also see hurts being reflected to us is through the brain waves. Anybody who's had an EKG would know about this or looked at, you know, thinking about what's the right levels of concentration or sleep patterns. Right. Okay. So we when we have the delta wave, of course, we're looking at nice sleep, relax, theta, of course, lots of focus, again, deeply relax, alpha, you have still relax, but just, you know, you can still do some things. Sometimes that's a really nice multitask kind of state, beta, again, feeling very stimulated, and then gamma, you have high levels of concentration. Sandra, is there anything you'd like to say about this slide? Um... No, I don't think so. The concentration I have to say is, I think I talked to you about this when I was going to university 
and I was having a hard time concentrating, I actually used the Bach music because they say that really concentrates. So it helped me really concentrate and focus on when I was learning. Oh, we are definitely going to get into that connection with concentration and music and how it has an interaction with the Schumann resonance in just a few minutes. Sure. Um, so this is just a visual uh, representation of how those brain waves um, move. And they, of course, like different Hertz levels, they're going to have either a softer movement or a more interactive movement. And this is what we're seeing in the Schumann resonance. Um, and of course, graphics that have been mapping out the frequencies. So let's check that out. Oh, hang on. I also have an example of the three point, uh, sorry, the 7.38 or 83 hertz. Oops. Here, give me a moment. So if everybody has their volume up, this is a quick example. Lutes. Let's take a deep breath in. And this is the Schumann heart, the Schumann frequency in action. We can't hear it. At all? No, I can't. Oh. Where's that? Let me see about cranking the volume here. Give me a second. Oops, wrong way. Now? No. Oh, well, now I can. There. Oh, that's so neat. Another moment here. There we go. That is so neat. So that's what somebody, when they go outside and they're hugging a tree or they're just putting the feet on the ground, and that's actually what they're absorbing at that level. Yes. And one of the things is I've cranked the volume on that. Right. 7.83 hertz. It isn't necessarily detectable by our ear. Unless no, if, you know, no. We've got superhuman hearing. That's not necessarily the case for everyone. Um, bear with me here. But we'll, I, we'll feel it. That's right. Right. Um, say if you're going to get your hearing tested, uh, one of the things to note about it is when you're sitting in that booth and the audiologist is running the beats for it, they don't even test at a rate of seven hertz. The first kind of beginning or the lowest they may test is at 125 hertz. So when we're talking about the Schumann resonance here, you may not necessarily hear it. No. And that's one of the key points that I want to mention here. Um, if it's like, as we ascend and as Earth, of course, starts to have greater and greater frequencies, and we're seeing more and more of those peaks, if by any chance is getting into kind of more of that, like over 50, over 60 Hertz, which isn't necessarily as common to have those major peaks in, or spikes of the uh, Hertz frequency in the Schumann resonance right at this exact moment it has happened mm, kind of a little bit more sporadic. The, um, when we get closer to the 125 Hertz level, that's a still very low frequency, low pitch but we're getting closer to a range where it is auditory, like auditorily accessible for oh, the average okay. human is what I'm trying to say here. Think okay. of frequency as kind of like when you step in front of a piano, you've got your low pitched keys where you would play dun 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 dun. And then of course, on the other side of the piano, you have your high pitched keys where you would play twinkle, twinkle, little star. The 
pitch range for the Schumann resonance, even with some of these spikes, is still in that low frequency range, which can be more accessible for the body to sense versus auditorily alone. Right. Okay. Um, one of the ways that we're seeing the Schumann resonance be measured now in the different graphics is through color and those wavelengths of color because that's still frequency as well and we're going to take a picture or take a look at that as to what has been measured for alberta um the other thing that i want to mention here too is we're going to have a slide um, in the near future on this presentation too of how that color can also correspond with the musical notes part of resonance so right this is the schumann resonance graphic for of course uh january 26th 27th and the 28th is a little bit cut off it's running on the 24 hour clock what you may notice is that we have high levels of contrasting colors the blue vibrant on the bottom we're seeing a lot of green a bit of red yellow lots of yellow lots of spikes of yellow yeah. um, and even into a little bit of the white and that's when we're getting kind of like timbits of the ultraviolet which again for us humans you know how many of us can see ultraviolet um i don't know if it's fair to say that a lot of us can not so much but what i do love is that we're seeing a greater contrast of the greens reds and yellows uh, and let's take a look at some of our color spectrum when we've talked about that spectrum again looking at the wavelengths here they have con corresponding musical notes yes do you want to talk about this sandra yeah i just want to show my bubble because i'm so happy with it i don't think they can hear it Okay, I have to put it like this, but this is a musical bowl and you're going to show yours. They can hear yours, but how it will resonate. Okay. We could hear it. I can't make it go now really good. It's working. Yeah, okay, but anyway, when you pick a bowl, I call mine an ascendant, and I didn't, I just said the bowl will pick me. And this one actually has, and you can talk about that. This one actually is an E and an A. Mm. Which is really beautiful because in the uh, data chart that we just looked at. Right. For the Schumann resonance, we got to see lots of yellows, a bit of red here. So we had um your bowl that has the e frequency is matching up with the yellow which is the musical note of e and of course if i look think about the chakras too yellow for the solar plexus empowerment so through this light frequency through this schumann resonance as we're getting an increase and um a flare of, of like being booming down on earth and us humans it's asking us to step into our empowerment right. and then for your bull it's also resonating at an a which corresponds with violet color and if i go back to the chakra colors that's the crown so that intelligence the enlightenment ascension Ooh, and again we have a beautiful correlation with the increase in the Schumann resonance and the ascension process. So let's get to that. Okay, I just want to say one thing because this this Saturday on February the 5th, we have a full moon in Leo. And Leo is ruled by the sun, okay? And this one because of the the um degree and everything, it is all about us stepping into our power. Stepping into our power and shining. And so we wanted to do this, this presentation here a little while ago, and we couldn't. It's incredible how it's all in divine timing. Mm. It's so important. 
And maybe we'll see, like, as, as we're coming into that full moon, maybe we'll see in how that Schumann resonance, is it increasing? Is it providing us? Are we on the data points? Are we getting more of that yellow? Right. Are we, getting, and are we rooting that yellow, you know, grounding it into our body? Maybe we'll see a little bit of reds on that pictogram, too. Right. Oh, beautiful connection. Um, again, relating it specifically to Alberta and kind of tying back into that brainwave component as we're seeing some spikes in it, we're going up into those gamma brain waves. Okay, so lots of activity, concentration in the brain. You know, maybe some of us might be making connections to our higher selves and getting that divine guidance. Yes. Yeah mellow that is starting to mellow us back out like whoo that may have been some points of really intense moments in a person's life and the of course thankfully mellowing it a bit out but you know what we know we're going to come back to have an influx in those hurts um and that this one again is hang on here hopefully you all can see it that i've got on this slide january 4th to february 1st so not that long ago we had a peak Okay, may have been a really busy night for individuals around this January 12th into the 14th. Now we've mellowed out a bit. Hmm. Who's to say when that next peak is going to be, but get yourselves ready. Um, for any individuals, you know, over this January 12th to 14th, if you did not feel great uh, throughout that period of time, there's this whole connection of how Hertz levels has a interactive part with the water in our body. Remember, water can be programmed and right. water is a conductor. Okay, so as these hertz, the, these frequency wavelengths are entering our body, it's activating the water within us. This is an example of it at seven hertz. Now, our, remember the Schumann resonance, seven point eight three yeah this is it at eight hertz so the water molecule is changing and having a little bit of a different structure and all of this is moving really fast this is it at 19 hertz so you notice that the outside structure that's got some really interesting sacred geometry movement to it yeah this is again that ascension process be the water being activated within us charged up and that has a direct impact on the mitochondria within your body fueling us mitochondria is really helpful in terms of supercharging the body think of it as like a bit of a battery pack for us right. so, you know we're getting those influxes in the schumann resonance Whew, some people may be feeling supercharged then the body then may be like hmm it's time to detox because it's got the energy to help maneuver and clear out toxins and that's one of the ways where we have the tuning happening in our body you know the water is carrying the frequency throughout us um, different aspects of our body, whether it's our organs, um, and you know that mitochondria is interacting. Um, a certain frequency range. Actually, I'll do it with my chimes over here, because these are set. So if I hit strike one side of these, it's automatically because it's at the same frequency range, is going to have this one start resonating. And that's the beauty of resonance. When, hopefully you can hear it really nicely now. I got um, those, I love mine. Yes. So when our more of our body is resonating at a certain frequency, it's activating either other components of our body to start resonating at that same frequency. Now, if there has been toxins in that certain part of the body, it's going to say, hmm, time to clear that out because they need to be at the same frequency. That's where, um, say for that, for those few days earlier in January, you know, we had those spikes in the, the hertz. 
Maybe you needed to drink more water too. Feeling really dehydrated. That has an aspect with resonance and of course, the ascension symptoms. Bear with me here. Um, it's not always necessarily being like physically sick uh, from like a virus, but more it's bo your body doing what it's supposed to be doing. Do you want to talk a little bit about this? One yeah, well, we're, we're going through such a, a such an ascension process right now because we're moving from the 3D to the 5D to the 7D. OK, so we are changing our whole DNA is changing. And so a lot of people have been going through the ascension processes. So it's physically, emotionally, whatever. And they can't seem to put um, they, they can't seem to figure it out. And I think it really bothers them. It scares them if they understand it is just a process. And if they can even look at, they can find the 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 uh, Schumann resonance. You can check it on YouTube what it actually is that day. And I think there's a timing for detoxing that would really be good. Like because people say, "Oh, I'm going to go on a detox," but if we go on a detox when it's when it's um, when it's good with the with the human resonance, that would be more effective, would it not? It definitely could be, and that would be kind of like on the downswing. Yeah, of one of the when it's been spiked, and you know this could be as simple as having a hot bath, right? Um, making sure you've got the Epsom salt. You could even check your pH balance. You know, right? Some, yes. So. Um, here is here's the um here's the the um what do you call them papers the their ph papers and people use them for what testing their um uh, sugar levels sugar levels or even your urine um even if you wanted to test your drinking water please do um some of you individuals watching this might be viewing from different parts of the world and that may mean that how your water is treated, where you are in the world, may have a slightly different pH level. It may also have other things in it on a molecular level. Like here in Canada, a lot of our water has the, um, it's fl fluoridide. It's got a lot of fluoride in it. And the government's been like, oh, you know, it's for your benefit. But no. That's not necessarily true because there has been some uh, research net coming out now around uh, fluoride and Alzheimer's, but that's not, that's not quite the point of this uh, exact video. Um, what we're encouraging here is that is you, if you're finding that you're entering into the process of ascension symptoms, you're in the thick of it, please feel free to test your pH level. Maybe yeah. there's a self care component that you an action that you can do that'll help the water molecules within your body um, to act to maintain or uh, what's the word I'm looking for hmm. balance no. the balance but also help with you know pulling those toxins out of your body. Right. So, and I think another thing is when we, when we're at acidic is when we can be, we can become ill when we're, we want to keep an alkaline body. And, and everybody may kind of run a little slightly different. Right. And that's the benefit of using the pH papers to just see where you're at and you can get these at your health food store. Yeah. Um, not too overly too expensive and you know you can dip your water into it dip your if you're a coffee drinker and you're curious how acidic is this coffee check it out you know there's lots of different things that um, we are constantly exposed to in an environmental way and what we ingest in our body that has an impact on the body through whether it be through ph whether it be through hydrating us or dehydrating us or bringing right. in different types of toxins. And, you know, as we're going through these increases and spikes in the Schumann resonance, whether it be from wavelengths of light or other aspects, remember that electromagnetic spectrum that I showed you or showed the audience, um, 
the and this, aftercare this, for the body. Yeah. The and the, the, the solar storms. We're having a lot of solar storms that are really, really affecting us right now. And as far as water, I was brought up um, like in the country. So when you have uh, well water and that type of thing, sometimes you have a lot of iron in it. Mm. so there's different things and people can study it or i mean i'm going to leave um your information so people can get a hold of you that if they want to come and they want to have a session and treatment and that type of stuff that you could work with them jessica well and even um even if they come for a session because tuning forks do work on such an intense level on the body i still recommend to my clients to do a detox bath afterwards right so the tuning forks are working on a resonance level and of course if anything is needing to be shifted and released through the body having a nice hot bath with a balance of Epsom salts and some baking soda, or even food grade hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O2, increasing the oxygen in the body. Oh, I want to talk to you about that. Cause I used to do, I used to do that. So that's important. But I want to say one thing about a session with Jessica, you get a post and you get a pre. And so she really takes care of understanding of what's happening with you when you go to see you and then afterwards. And that's something I really appreciate. Okay. So you can even test it. I got this out right now. I had to put this here and I'm just going to put it in my tongue. And I can see what it says. Then you can check it right on the little um, box that she get here. So I'm running at, I'm actually running at a 4.5. Which, if I remember correctly, is more on the acidic level. Right. Okay. And that's not really good. Oh, no, it's, pardon me. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Too, too much acid can cause, can cause some damage. Um, Again, do some bodies prefer more of an acid based on kind of like the bacterial level. Um, however, you know, this might be an opportunity now that you've done the test, Indra, maybe some extra water later. Right. Well, I've got some water here right now. And that's one of the things that I need to work on more is to work on the water. Okay. So, no, that's perfect. Hydration is uh, a key to our life force energy. Uh, but thank you for mentioning that. I actually really appreciate it. And, you know, it's an absolute joy to uh, share my gift of tuning forks with others. Uh, and I really do care about, you know, how the this healing modality is used. And it's really important to me that it's for the benefit of the client. Yeah, but well, I said to you, you are a natural healer. And I've worked with a lot of different people over the years because part of my process is the physical. I've had to really look at my uh, look at the physical and work with it basically all my life. So that is really important. And another thing when we're talking water, Dr. Emoto, the Japanese fellow, has an incredible book out on um, how he tested water based on different musics, I think it was, and how it how it and that's just it. So the music in the house can affect a person. Like I'm very sensitive to that. I can go into somebody's place and I can I can pick it up and I can't be there. Okay. And it's simply because of, of the different frequencies in there. And I think the frequency can, can be of the people, but of the um, what do you call them? Of the um, of the music that they play. And those little ten shways, if you want to pick them up, that's your ten shways. I found that using those ten shways, you can go around in a house and you can break the energy. So it's like it's almost like um, saging it. Mm. You're That's another beautiful healing technique too to help clear energy. Right, and those little ones I didn't know, but you can go and you can just walk around and you can break, and it's like it breaks the energy and kind of balances it out. I'm not quite sure about that. I just know I use it at times beautiful practice yeah this is our last slide and i love how we just 
started to bring that in talking about the resonance and the energy being around different vibrational energy music is absolutely one of them um and really thinking about what musical tones help to relax the body um do they make you do they help you feel good uh do they help you to feel energetic and music can definitely be something that is uplifting. And as earlier, as Sandra mentioned about how music helped her to concentrate. And again, that goes back to that brainwave component that we introduced earlier in the slides. Um, and this is, again, going to that resonance. Is the music helping to support the brainwaves in their body? Then on a molecular level, the water within us is it resonating with the music and we got to see an example of different her, uh, hertz whether if it was seven eight 19 or 20 how it has an impact on water on a molecular level this all goes back to resonance and the schumann resonance of course is our earth-based frequency how are we every day connecting with it um, and how is it impacting us on our auric field, on our energy uh, as a human being? How are we connecting with it? Or if it's just like, whoa, I'm really feeling this because we're happened to going through a solar flare or a solar storm. Um, those are all pieces <laughs> of this kind of really big puzzle that's showing up on how we as individuals resonate to it. Yeah, because there's a lot of times that it talks, especially in the spiritual world and whatever, where the Schumann resonance is really high. And that's what I'm saying. They can go and check it. And it's like I've seen it like really high where people are just kind of really um, because we're affected by it. OK, and, and you're right. It'll affect different people different ways. But I know when I'm feeling really good. OK, when I'm feeling really good. I know what music I like to play for me. I know what me music helps me become joyful. And at night, I actually use special music. And we're going to have a special session about that um, later. Okay. But so this is perfect. And so now um, we're going to, Jessica, if you've got anything to say, I want to make sure that in your in the hashtags that we have, we have everything we need so that people can get a hold of you. Okay. Yeah, um, you can reach me at atmaps.org. It's my website, Alchemical Treasure Maps, as well as stay tuned because Sandra and I are going to talk about the self veggio uh, frequencies in the right. near future. We're going to put together a presentation about that. Um, no, it's always a joy working with you. And yeah, and we, I mean, basically, it's about fun and it's, and it's, Helping people to understand that we are energy beings. Mm. We are going through an ascension process. The collective right now is in the dark night of the soul. And our saving grace is for us to align with the divine. And that's what this for me is all about in, in simple terms, because we're energy beings and we want to align with the higher level of consciousness, okay? And so I really appreciate it. And I wanna thank everybody that took the time and I hope that you can enjoy it. I hope it, there was, uh, it resonated with you, number one. And number two, if you go underneath, you can see my website. And so you can see the different services I offer. And if you go to the top, you'll see where Game Changer is the new model of relationships. Very Aquarian. Again, that is a different frequency. Okay. And another thing, if you, in fact, put a comment, you get your name in a draw. And I just put the winner of the draw for January up. And I so appreciate it. And, and um, Jessica and I are going to be doing more. And if you have questions, like I say, in the hashtags, I will have your information so that they can get a hold of you if they want to set up an appointment, uh, if they want to have any questions or whatever. And so now I've got to figure out how I'm going to stop this so we don't lose it. That was great. It was okay. interesting too, because the sun at some points was coming out and showing us that it is active midways through. Right. And so, yeah, exactly.